Hello and welcome. My name is Anastasia Zatula, if you don't know me. I am a Reiki master, NLP master. And today I'm going to help you to heal your trust issues. Now, trust issues are like a concept of time. It's not really existing in the world of energy. It is only existing to keep us sane. Uh, trust issues also uh, the same as betrayal, codependency, abandonment. These are traumas that come from childhood. Uh, these are all unfinished business with our parents and we're trying to finish it in, um, in our adult life. Ideally, they should have been left uh, behind uh, in our childhood. They shouldn't even be present. They should have been um, they shouldn't even arise in an in a ideal world, but since they were, they, uh, they should have been fixed and forgotten in the past. Now, unfortunately, they are not, and people carry them with them uh, as an open wound. And every time something triggers that open wound, that issue becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And at one point, you will need to deal with them, otherwise you won't be able to... Um, to survive in this society you won't be like it would be hard for you to experience life to experience people around you because you're not uh, uh, you're not sure how to deal with um, with this uh, with this issue so today we're talking about trust issues trust issues are not uh, are not a big problem for a lot of people but for those that have these issues it's like uh, uh, it's over, almost over dramatic for them like it's very hard for them to overcome these issues to start trusting people around them to to even uh, start trusting themselves actually trust issue is a, uh, is a trust with yourself it's a broken trust with yourself so you basically don't believe that you can uh, control everything outside and inside to the point that you won't be hurt that's basically what trust issue is but you can't be blaming yourself all the time so you start uh you start blaming others you start believing that they should act in a particular way for you to have a particular uh, particular kind of you know, trust and particular belief in them so uh, but uh, in truth trust is um, is our relationship with ourselves our relationship with uh, with the masculinity inside of us trust issues are issues with the father all the time actually the security and trust is always about relationship with her, with father um, so most of the people who have trust issues I did I used to have trust issues a little bit um, I do sometimes but for the most part it's not my my case it's not my issue never was for the for the most part I mean yes my parents uh, uh, were kind of interesting because they're energy affairs so they really didn't uh, didn't take anything seriously too serious so I grew up kind of trying to convince others <laughs> um, that um, to take me serious kind of but uh, I understood early enough that I don't have to try as hard so but I know people that have serious trust issues like if you will tell them um, let's have lunch um, uh, like um, I don't know in a couple days they will be like are you sure uh, I will call you tomorrow to confirm, like they need to have a confirmation constantly. So um, these are usually people energy of first. So if you have a lot of energy in the Capricorn, Taurus or Virgo, you would have some kind of trust issues. You feel like you need to control everything outside because you're very grounded. At one point, that grounding feeling was broken for you. It was somewhere in childhood. So how does it usually, um, how does it usually happen? I will tell you how. Let's imagine that your father promised you to take you to a zoo to see an elephant. And you're a little child, you never saw an elephant. So for you, this event is a huge deal. I'm not talking about some a father that uh, just comes once, uh, once a week to see you. A father that lives with you just mentioned randomly, mentioned randomly, hey, why don't we go to the zoo um, next Saturday um, and you will see the elephant. So for you, it's a huge event. You're a small child. Elephant is somebody, it's something um, life breaking, so to say, like something, something uh, like it's, a, it's an event in your life. So the whole week you're anticipating this kind of, uh, this outing with your father. You really don't care much uh, for the father or for anything. You care that this event is happening in your life and you're going to see that elephant. Then 
what usually what could have happened your father would forget about his um, his blurred out promise or maybe he became busy and he didn't thought that it meant that much to you so he basically just decided okay you know th that's fine didn't happen didn't happen so he didn't took you to the zoo now for you you don't really care that moment you don't care about the elephant you care that the father didn't kept his promise he didn't took you now it's not about the elephant at that moment at that moment this was a serious uh, a serious event for you and that serious event in the child's mind was almost um, like a life dependent you see at that time you couldn't really distinguish whether it's really important or not important for you at that moment to go to the zoo see the elephant spend time with your father was almost um, um, like a like like getting food for dinner so it was as important even probably more important so at that moment when the father didn't show up and the, maybe he was at work and he was late and you know that he you guys are not going to the zoo in your mind it was like he left you to die basically in the, not literally but that's how your mind interpret because you were anticipating you put so much your little child's pressure on this event that when it didn't happen it was like a like a huge slap back you see you must understand how it works so it has nothing to do really for your uh, with your um, um with your life but in the child's mind my, my mind <laughs> it was a huge shock and that shock became a trauma that's how it works now uh, ideally what would happen your father should have come and say um, listen um, so you you kind of you should have told your father why didn't you come why didn't you took me to the to the zoo that's that's what uh, that's what I would do right but some, but the other kids they wouldn't do that and the father would say oh I didn't I forgot or I had to work I'm sorry I will take you I will take you in a couple days and the father would really take you in a couple days and, and that trauma would not be as traumatic it would not become a trauma because it would be healed in that moment now, because it doesn't happen like this, the kids usually don't doubt their parents, they, they, they don't say nothing, um, parents don't really understand what is so important for the kid, um, and, the, and you basically live with that, you live with that huge shock uh, over that zoo and elephant with your father. So, uh, after that, like let's say in a month, your father uh, tells something else, like, um, we should go and uh, see a baseball game. Now, you're excited about the baseball game, but you're anticipating uh, the same outcome. Now, if your father at that moment will forget about the baseball game, that's it. The trauma is set. If he will take you to the baseball game, I mean, you probably, you will have, there is chances 50-50 that you might, um, that you would have healed and, and moved on with life. Now, uh, then you kind of you you growing up and you start um, you are not a child anymore and uh, you have friends and they tell you something and you already have this mistrust you're already feeling like what if they don't like if a friend tells you um i'm going shopping with you um after school and you and you're thinking what if she will come up with an excuse what if she will not go you see that uh, uh, that traumatic event uh became like it's like you always expecting this to happen just the same as in every trauma really but uh, um, uh, but you need to heal it right you can't live like this because what happened with people who live like this this is what happened you are so concerned you're so you're expecting people to trauma to basically um, not uh, to do what you are what you are expecting them to do uh, so they don't do what you expect them to do um, and the, you keep expecting this you keep waiting that somebody will betray you that somebody will um, will break your trust and some that people start proving you remember where um, uh, you're basically in the hall of mirrors and uh, the reflection is uh, what you're projecting into the wall so what happens you get yourself a boyfriend and the boyfriend is constantly <laughs> It's just basically not reliable. So you start fighting with him and he wants to please you. So he tries to do it, but you're still expecting all the time some kind of um, him breaking your trust somehow. And at one point he gets tired of this uh, constant control and he will break the trust because you're expecting it. This is your defense mechanism. You see, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to 
live through what you lived when you were a child and you were waiting for your father to take you to see the elephant. So you start defending yourself so not to have that little shock. But you were a little kid at that time and you depended on the father, you depended on him um, taking him. And again, it, was, it had nothing to do with the elephant. It had something to do um, in your mind that, uh, not in your mind, but in the mind of that little kid that the father left you and you won't be able to survive. Remember, with the father we have the feeling of security and, um, and grounding, the trust, all these feelings, all these heavy feelings that we're um we're you know, like something important this material world that's what the father gives us um so you start controlling everybody around you you basically uh you start controlling your kids your parents um, your relatives your friends your um your man and uh, what do you get you get people that are unreliable because you're constantly controlling them to match the energy they have to be unreliable and at one point you're like why couldn't I? Why, why am I surrounded with this, uh, with people that are like children? You know, why couldn't I rely on nobody? Why nobody acts like an adult? Well, because you are overacting as an adult. You are, uh, you are acting as a parent to grown-up people, just because you are trying to control them, so they will not hurt you uh, through breaking the trust. And you see, if you will continue living like this, it would. Uh, it will be a mess you see <laughs> it will be a miserable existence it, it, when you are young it's okay to control everybody because you have a lot of energy you can do that but as you become older you, you know you need more energy for yourself not for everybody around and you need to know that you're living with the people that you can um, you can rely on that could be trustworthy you see and plus you could not be living and expecting a knife in your back all the time that's just that's not how it works so um, you need to heal this trauma. It's it, it's impossible. You know, I had a couple clients with this with this issue. It's unbelievable. You know, like um, I'm always on time with uh, with the consultations. Always, I'm never late. You know, if I'm late one minute or so, I will write. But they they have so much. Uh, like their issue is so um, is so deep rooted that they would write me a day in advance, half an hour in advance. I was still on. I was, and that's that's uh, to take in consideration that I never was late with them, so I'm not sure where they're getting. Like, um, and I I understand this, and we're working on this all the time. But yet they could not resist. They're so afraid that I will, uh, you know, that I will be not trustworthy. They don't want to lose me, obviously, because you know, because I'm helping them. So, what I want to say is that uh, uh, you need, if you have this issue, if you have this problem, you need to solve it, and I will tell you how to solve it. It is not an easy process, obviously, as with any childhood trauma, it's not an easy process because it's been with you for years, you know, for maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 years or how long it is. But you need to heal it, you know, you could not. You Let's imagine you can control your man and he's like an absolutely feminine kind of, uh, you know, spineless creature. Okay, fine. But then you will have children. You don't want them to be spineless, right? You want your children to be strong and successful. And you need to trust them. You need to to know that they will be able to make uh, right decisions in their life. So let's <laughs> let's help you. Let's fix you. Uh, and if you think that controlling everything is good, no, it's not. It's actually a very unhealthy situation. You uh, when you are controlling everybody uh, and everything around you, one thing that you don't trust yourself. Another thing is. Uh, you you're very heavy on those people you know it's it's like <laughs> I mean, I, um, it, it's not you wouldn't be an easy person to socialize and remember people love people that are light and that's what they said you will start attracting people that are unreliable because the reliable people will not want to be around you and you wouldn't be able to attract them just because Remember, we have to match, right? So if you are super controlling, then you will have to get somebody who is absolutely unreliable. Now, if you will be like tr in trust to the universe and to people around you, then you will have people that are absolutely reliable and that, that are like, like good like this. So what to do? Um, the first step to do, you need to find, uh, find that situation that caused it. So it should be something huge for you. Again, uh, going to the zoo and, and see an elephant is not a huge event, but it was a huge event in the, in the life of a child. 
I remember my childhood and I remember the events that really, really um, were like groundbreaking for me. And those events right now, like if I would tell you, you would probably laugh. Like for example, the first groundbreaking event for me was when my mom took me to a wedding, not at night, uh, not the, but uh, like in the daytime and uh, she was helping to prepare for you know for the celebration and uh and i was there and i felt like uh like i was such a such an such an important amazing person <laughs> i mean i know it's kind of it sounds even silly but um, uh, but i remember those events very brightly so find the event that triggered that situation find the event when you felt like you could not almost count on your father, like you could not trust your father. Find that, that event in your life and look at it <laughs> with the eyes of a grown-up person. I mean, was the zoo really that important for you to live with this, uh, with this issue right now? Um, it's usually the father. Could be your mom if your mom was masculine or if she was uh, taking a masculine, masculine role in the house. So for example, your father was more like kind of loving, kind of sweet, or giving you baths and taking you to bed. And your mom was more like a businesswoman and she, would like, uh, she was always busy all the time. So you, you appreciated those few minutes that she would uh, spend with you. Could be a mother, but usually it's father. Um, so find that situation, look at it through the... Um, um, so it's somebody who you admired, somebody who you almost worship, so to say. And now you need the you need to like to find an ex almost find an excuse for your father or for that person. So whoever it was, find an excuse. You remember, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for yourself. At that moment, when that happened, you were a little child that needed your parents for survival. Right now, you don't need your parents to survival, but your parents are your roots, and you need to have. A really good perception of them because they're your roots if you wouldn't have a good perception about your parents you will always feel weak in this world and if you will look through your friends and, and relatives you probably know that the most confident the most secure people in life are those that have really strong parents or at least an idea about those parents and if you need you can watch the video relationship with parents that I also have so Find, uh, find like an excuse or speak to yourself, speak uh, to some, something like, okay, so my father didn't take me to zoo because at that time uh, my parents was, uh, you know, my parents were saving for a house, so he was working a lot uh, or something like that. You need to find, um, if you couldn't find the situation, the first situation, there probably were a couple more after. It's not like this, the pattern doesn't, um, is not stuck uh, after one time there's like a few situations so find at least one of those but it has to be in childhood yeah uh, if you like for example have had a boyfriend when you were like 18 19 and he and he betrayed your trust um, uh, that's not the situation that's already that's already a pattern um so then uh, you find the excuse for your um, um for your father for your mom um and the remember what was happening at that time usually our other like especially if you don't if your parents don't live together usually one of the parents often happens speak not very nicely about uh, about uh, the other parents so for example your parents are divorced you live with your mom and your father doesn't show up to um, on sunday to pick you up and take you somewhere um, and the mom uh, will, will mention something like, look at your father, not reliable completely, something like that. And the child's mind, this is the, um, this is the threat to his life. He is afraid that uh, the father will not be there for him and he will not be able to survive. Remember, a child's mind, uh, it's all about survival at that moment. It has nothing to do with who is good or, or bad. It's about will I survive or not if my father doesn't, doesn't like me, doesn't want to come. Um, uh, so maybe at that moment it was your mom who said, listen, you see your father promised you to take you to the zoo and didn't take you to the zoo. Look how bad he is. I mean, I'm making it up, obviously, but it does happen. Uh, thankfully, um, not often, but it does happen. So if it was... 
if it was put in into your mind by somebody else make sure you have your own opinion you know you never know what was going on over there between your parents you don't know maybe you, your mom was making um, uh, was making it unbearable for your father to to come and visit you or something i'm not sure you know thanks god i was um, i was brought up in a you know in a um in a full family but i seen and uh, i have a couple clients whose parents were separated and it took them some time to even uh, to even reconcile with them so um find basically find the reason and uh, an, ex an excuse for what has happened that time um and understand that your father or your mother didn't leave you they were still with you after that so even if your father didn't took you to the zoo to see an elephant he still was present in your life or not present he still is your father he gave you life and that's that's what it matters if uh, he was present so he, let's imagine he didn't take you to the zoo but he came home and he was he next day he was with you yeah he forgot about his promise but he didn't leave you I mean he was um, uh, he was he was still spending time with you he was still attentive to you so um, paint almost a completely different picture if you have to. If it's extremely impossible for you to paint some kind of good picture, remember that your father loved you to the point to have you at least. So he already did the big job, so to say. Um, or your mom, obviously. So, uh, so you found the, the, the problem, you found the situation, you rewrote it, you understand how silly it is. It almost should be almost comical. Why did I make such a big deal out of uh, going to the zoo uh, watching uh, the elephant? Why? I don't understand. You know, it doesn't matter. My father always was there for me. I went to school. He always gave me money. I went, uh, you know, he was there when I was graduating college and stuff like that. So find a good excuse for your father. Instead of blaming him, find a good excuse. Again, you're not doing it for him, you're doing it for yourself. Now, ideally, that should be enough. If you will do everything right, that should be enough. You will see your trust issues will start melting away. You will never have that. If you will do it right. In NLP, actually, Neuro Linguistic Programming is believed that if you will one time address that issue really strong, it's, uh, you, the issue is resolved. But I know how it works. So, um, it it might not be enough so what you need to do you need to go to the situation recent ones um, maybe your recent relationship or maybe um, some kind of maybe at work maybe your relationship with friends um, so in your teenage years um, um, this is the time when we're actually establishing ourselves in the society and when we're building relationship with others so maybe you can go to to that time maybe you can go to uh, to your relationship remember some situations where you felt like your trust was broken and do the same thing understand that nobody wanted to hurt you nobody was there to hunt you <laughs> um, they uh, they basically were showing you that you have this wound that needed to be healed you need to feel like a little light neutral gratitude um uh, for them uh, because they showed it to you something like that so if for example um you i don't know you told a secret to your friend and your friend uh, and your friend friend told you <laughs> told your secret to other friends i mean she only showed you uh, that you need to work on trust issues it has nothing to do it's not your it's not life-threatening it's uh, you you know yeah it's unpleasant but it's not um, it's not as bad it's actually more like into betrayals but still um, or for example if you have um, if you have unreliable friend because usually people who have trust issues have a lot of unreliable people around them so let's imagine you have an unreliable friend and you um, you have this kind of tradition go to um, go to dinner and drinks every Friday let's say a night uh, girls nights out night out and um, mm, and a couple times your friend just basically forgot or maybe didn't show up or maybe had other plans or something something similar and now you kind of have the uh, trust issues every time you go in uh, to meet with her you're like what if she wouldn't show up what if she will forget um, so you would need to kind of uh, to tell yourself that no it has nothing to do really with me she is going to be there 
and uh, and when she didn't show up she really felt bad about this and um, and she didn't mean to hurt me it was just it just happened at that moment so like this um, ideally all the all the situations that were heavy on you like this you should uh, you should go back and um, and see the reasoning you know don't look at those situations as a little child that needs um, that needs support um, of a parent look at it as a grown-up um, I'm telling you when you look at it as a grown-up neutrally completely neutrally without any kind of emotions it would look like yeah it is a, a little unpleasant but nothing to <laughs> to always stress about nothing to be anxious about like that you will see I did it uh, I mean I didn't had such trust issues but I did and uh, my clients also do it um, then uh, you need to you need to take responsibility for your life and you need to understand that you're a grown-up person now kids don't listen to my in uh, don't listen to my videos so I know that all of you who are listening right now um, are grown up so if you're a grown-up person you don't need anybody else to feel you to make you feel secure in life you don't need them you don't need them to take you to see the elephant you can do it yourself at that moment you needed your parents because you knew you wouldn't survive your mind knew that right now you don't need anybody you can survive on your own and you will be fine um, so remove that would uh, once you will take the responsibility for your life and you understand that you don't need anybody else to live you will remove uh, this hugest pressure from people around you from yourself first of all you will remove the pressure that you need to control everybody and uh, and everything uh, and you will see how much lighter you <laughs> um, you will feel um, tr uh, here I put also here trust issues often come from holding on to past betrayals and disappointments and I know why you're doing it usually people do it to protect from the future disappointments and future betrayals now but look I mean <laughs> I don't know what to tell you but uh, you holding on to those events are only making them stronger those events stronger and more painful for you there's no i'm not going to preach about forgiveness but really um, because forgiveness is not really exactly what i would uh, i would want you to do i would want you to uh, to see those events as completely neutral so okay if the guy uh, promised to take you to to see a movie and he didn't well, I mean that's fine. Your life is not changing because uh, because somebody didn't take you to see a movie. You see, I would want you to to be neutral towards those events. It's not like you uh, you lower yourself to forgive that <laughs> that unreliable man. It's more like uh, that's fine. You know, it's not um, it's it, it's it's fine. Doesn't mean that you're going to tolerate this behavior all the time, but if you don't put pressure it does not affect you anyhow um, yeah like I put here the forgiveness releases the emotional burden that comes with holding on to the past events yeah so release all of that you know don't uh, I mean yeah, so you will you will have this kind of this blacklist of friends and, and boyfriends and everybody who uh, who broke your trust here and there but what's the point I mean uh, yeah so you will feel like look um, I'm so good and they're so not uh, not trustful I'm not I don't want to have them in the life in your life but is your life getting better from that I mean yeah you're eliminating people but this circle is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Does this anyhow improve your life? Besides that you know for sure that they are not going to betray you, that they are not going to break your trust anymore because uh, they are not on the list. So what I want to say is that, um, that be smart and play smart and, um, and work with your energy and uh, don't hold on to the past uh, disappointments. You know, the past disappointments, they happen, they happen. Okay, so... Um, next time we'll do better if you would not expect um, somebody breaking your trust they would not break your trust 
um, and that happens uh, you're not a little child that protects uh, his uh, his life you see you don't need to do that no more okay uh, the next one is you need to start taking little risks with people I understand that start trusting everybody at once is almost impossible especially for somebody who used to control everything so you would need to start doing it little by little for example if you are in a relationship and um, and uh, you don't want to cook so you tell your man uh, could you please uh, could you please bring a takeout or something could you go pick up some food and he will ask you well what do you want and you will tell him surprise me and believe that he will really that he he knows you good enough to bring you something that you like I'm telling you steps like this will not only help you to heal your trust issues but also will help your man to feel more masculine you see you trust in him now he is a responsible one now so he will he will grow and he will feel um, stronger and more masculine now um, you can you can start with others for example um, I'm not sure I'm not sure who you you can have issues with so for example maybe if you have children right um, grown-up children for example um, and uh, the child is not calling you every day as you ask um, him or her to do um, just trust that the child knows what is better for him and uh, and he's or uh, she's doing fine um, all right so taking risks will kind of uh, slowly move you into this um, into the uh, trust uh, to others again and again you will see you know it's in, it's all it's hard to kind of to go from non-trusting to jump into complete trust it's impossible especially if you're expecting people to betray you so do trust um, another one is you need to start trusting yourself remember how I said that uh, trust issues come from uh, a fear that you will not be able to control uh, what affects your life when you were a child you couldn't control it because your parents are there for you and you really could not control the events that happen in your life you only um, hope and believe that your parents know what is better for you kind of um, now uh, you you are grown up and you take control over your mind over your life over your energy over your thoughts about uh, everything uh, so start trusting yourself that you can make the right decision that you can um, um, that you can um, that you can <laughs> that you uh, that your life is secure you see um, tr because trust comes from your father usually uh, if you have trust issues with others you have trust issues with yourself you have trust issues with your masculinity you basically don't believe that the man inside of you is good enough to protect you if something bad happens that's what it is now uh, but you have to live with yourself and you have to live with the others you know you could not be protecting yourself from everything so start uh, start believing that the man inside of you is capable of protecting you start trusting that this uh, this could happen when you are not trusting yourself you basically blame yourself that you allowed that to happen but it was a long time ago and you could not control what was happening at that time right now your masculinity is strong your femininity is strong allow them to do the right decisions for you whatever it would be it would so uh, you can you can do some kind of affirmations like um, I always make right decisions or I always know what to do or I always um, um, I always attract right people um, or I always attract reliable people or I'm surrounded by reliable people something like that but to heal uh, to uh, to heal the trust issues with yourself uh, the best one is I'm all, I always make right decisions I always know what to do this is the best one honestly um, and again you need to start trusting yourself before you start trusting others when you are controlling others you technically it's like you could not control yourself so you're thinking okay who can I control let me see I mean I can control this or that and you know something uh, but if you have trust with yourself you will have trust with others too I guarantee you um, 
the another one is uh, work with somebody like me <laughs> or you can work with somebody who is not me but um, um, I will tell you why I suggest you to work with somebody um, it is a little hard sometimes to pinpoint the problems so you think that you're doing everything right like for example you made um, um, you made the uh, you decided to go to dinner with your friend seems everything perfect you want to go see your friend you guys decided to go to dinner um so the day before the dinner you're like texting her hey i was still on for tomorrow and she's like yeah of course so you're excited you're getting you know um, all <laughs> getting uh, anticipating this event like you were anticipating uh, the elephant um, and then um, um, the day of the dinner, you're texting her again, um, hey, I'm leaving soon, blah, 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 you know, see you soon. And she's basically, um, and she's basically, she texts you, oh, I'm sorry, you know, something came up. My nanny didn't show up. I could not leave my kids. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And you're like, what did I do wrong? I mean, I, I made the, you know, we, we decided on the dinner. I texted her the day before. I texted her right now. And now she's just telling me she's not coming. Like, you see, in, in your mind, you're like, I did everything right. I mean, what did I do wrong? <laughs> like, my clients, when they, when they come to me with this, it's very hard for me to defend somebody when they're like, look, <laughs> look, I have all the proof. And, the, you know, and, and this is what happened. I understand all that but it doesn't happen to everybody it wouldn't happen to me so uh, why is it happening to you I mean there is something in you that promotes this kind of behavior what what is it that um, you know that make people to act like this what what is it that um, that pushes uh, some kind of events in their life that make you so disappointed and the, and you feel like they broke your trust you see it's there is no um, um, is it doesn't really happen uh, happen to everybody so that's why i'm telling you you need to uh, would be good if you work with somebody not with your friends because you will tell your friend can you imagine this girl we were supposed to go to dinner and she didn't uh, found and she didn't find a reliable nanny like this and the friend will say yeah you know why would you even socialize with her like this? The friend will not help you. The friend will basically just tell you, yeah, you're absolutely right. And you live and you will still feel like sour. You will not feel uh, good. <laughs> so you need somebody neutral who will tell you, listen, the problem is not in her. The problem is in you. Let's fix you. So that's why working with somebody would be good. Um, now, uh, I also wanted to tell you, and I already mentioned that control creates excessive energetic pressure on you first of all and when you create that energetic pressure it is absolutely uncomfortable for you it is uncomfortable for the other parties so because you were you know, because you create so much energetic pressure on that dinner and on your friend to show up you know she said like maybe she inside her she feels like she could not not show up and and something happens like this because there is so much pressure it has to neutralize somehow you see it needs to be pushed back and that's what the, that's what happened that's why it might happen to somebody but will not happen to for example somebody like me because i frankly don't care if i go to dinner or not if i see the friend or not i mean i can see her another time something um and the, uh, nobody wants to feel this nobody wants to feel that there is such a huge pressure around dinner you see or if you're uh, when you're in a relationship with the man and you um and you control him like you are overly jealous or over controlling with him i mean in the beginning it's kind of cute oh look uh, she loves me so much she's controlling me checks my phone uh, checks my phone all the time does this does this you know okay it's cute at the beginning but at one point it will it it, it becomes uh, a little crazy you see especially when uh, you think that if uh, if you will check your man's phone every single day it will give you peace no it won't because then you will start thinking what if he has somebody at work that he's flirting with so you will start controlling who he works with then you wouldn't be happy that he goes out with his friends so you will start controlling his friends you will start controlling his activity <laughs> you will start controlling um, where he goes and what he does and at one point either a man will become a completely unreliable couch potato that will be just basically 
listening to you and doing what you're telling him and you will stop admiring him because he doesn't even belong to himself no more or he will just push back and and basically um, will, will start living his own life and then you will be like um, why is he acting like this? I love him so much. Well, he's acting like this because there was too much pressure. Nobody wants to feel that. So, um, and again, as I said, if you will expect people um, to break a trust, I mean, they will break a trust unknowingly and unconsciously. You will ask your man to pick up a 2% milk and he will bring you a, a whole milk and you will be like going all crazy. Why? Because there was too much pressure on him bringing a particular milk, you know, you, you didn't trust him with that. Um, all right, so that's another one. And the tenth is you need to have a strong energy. Why? <laughs> you probably knew I would say that. Because strong energy creates confidence. Confidence creates soft boundaries. And when you have soft boundaries, um, you know for a fact that nothing can, uh, can come uh, into your life that is not welcome. You see, strong energy makes your femininity strong, your masculinity strong. And when both of those are strong, your life is, um, is just smooth, right? Yeah, you still have challenges, obviously, because you're experiencing life. It's not like you're just, um, just there uh, flowing, but it's much, uh, much easier, much more interesting experience. So instead of you fighting your unreliable friends, you actually are meeting new people or maybe experiencing with your existing friends something new. Maybe you're traveling together or something. Now, if you could not trust your friend with the dinner, I mean, how are you going to travel with them? You, you will go crazy with all the controlling. And, you know, so uh, uh, strong energy is, I would say strong energy is the, a key to, to healing any kind of trauma. But um, because the stronger energy you have, the more light you will get on any unsolved issue in your life so you will have to so like for example all my traumas that i had came out when i became um, a reiki practitioner so the first two so there is like um, um the first stage it's uh, like the zero stage and then first second um third and then uh, I, i'm a reiki master so by the first two stages that's what i was doing i was like one trauma after the other you know i was i thought i was going crazy i was supposed to be uh, I'm working with energy, I'm supposed to be powerful instead, I felt like no matter where I turn, I, I just, it was just getting worse and worse and worse, like, but uh, I was happy because all those issues came up and I was able to deal with them at that moment, those like maybe three years or so, I mean, they just, um, they hit me really hard, but I came out much stronger from there and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm helping you to do that, so strong energy is a must, work with your energy, keep your energy in your um, in your aura, the more it is in your aura, the less it is in other people, the less you put in pressure on others. Usually, because you're, you're, you're not trusting yourself, the pressure is so heavy on you, you start kind of coming out of, uh, out of your aura and start putting pressure on others. But again, people, um, uh, people will match your energy. So if you control them, they will be either uncontrollable or completely unreliable. You don't want that. You want to be surrounded by strong, confident people, um, reliable people, um, worthy of your trust, so to say. So uh, work on your energy. How to work on your energy? I mean, you can start with meditating. Mm, eat right, uh, exercise somewhat at least, or at least go for a walk. Watch what you, what you say, watch your mind. I mean, do my meditations, I have them. But all of this can, can heal your energy somehow. You can work with me. I do energy alignments every month. Uh, but uh, but you, can, you can do it on your own as well. Strong energy means uh, um, your strong presence in, uh, in this existence and in this life. It will help you um, to, uh, to have the strong a strong feeling about this life, about yourself, about uh, about anything. It's a confidence, you know, it's security that comes with it. If you have a strong first chakra, you feel very confident, you feel very, um, um, you feel like, you, like everything is under control. When you have a strong energy, you even feel good about your parents, about your siblings, about everybody. So strong energy is a must. Okay, um, I also wanted to say that uh, Trust issues are not easy to heal, um, so take time. 
it won't happen um, like in a month or so. You will start healing the trust issues and then somebody will, will do something and you'll be like, I knew this, I knew it's not working. It is working. It just, you need to change your behavior around the, um, um, you need to change your behavior every time something like this happens. So if somebody break your trust, you'll be like, okay. I still have work to do. That's fine. Like this. This is this should be your reaction. Somewhat neutral, like knowledgeable. But it will take time. It doesn't happen doesn't happen right away. It's a pattern that's been with you for so many years. You're expecting it. It would be um it's almost imp only if you are energy of air. I mean, those people are unattachable and they really don't care, then maybe. But uh, if you are special energy of earth, you will almost uh, like it's it, it's inside of you it will take time so bear with with yourself i mean give yourself time be patient be patient and don't get disappointed in people it's okay you know it's okay they did what they do it doesn't mean that they will repeat and uh, you will be surprised how fast people will prove you right um if you will expect them to be trustworthy you will see how fast they will become trustworthy okay so to sum it up uh, trust issues, trust traumas, uh, the same as betrayal, as codependency, as abandonment coming from childhood. That's it. Uh, we decided this is something that needs to be fixed. Otherwise, you're, it's like you will always be crippled moving um, on the path of life. And you don't want to be that. You want to walk kind of um, enjoying the path. Um, what do you, uh, it usually happens in childhood. You need to find the situation when it happened. Uh, usually it happens with the father something happened with the father so either the father didn't keep the promise or um, maybe he didn't do what the, what he was supposed to do or what you expected him to do or maybe your mom expected him to do and now he's a bad guy because because he didn't know there were some expectations of him so you need to find that situation um, how would you find it it was uh, you would still remember it it was like something that really um, um, uh, it's still now in your memory. Usually we don't remember much of, you, of our childhood, but, but you would remember this. Um, then what you need to do, you need to find an excuse for your father or for whatever happened that, that that situation was not as dramatic. Remember, in the child's mind, it was dramatic. In, in a grown-up's mind, it's not really uh, so bad. If you will think, if you think it's so bad, it doesn't matter. You need to find an excuse for what happened at that moment because you need to live and you need to move forward with life. You know, there's no reason to hold on to that pain that happened 30 years ago. There's no reason for that. So find an excuse for what happened. Find an excuse for your father. Find an excuse for why your mom was angry with your father. Something like that. Just make sure that your parents look like two white clear rabbits and uh, and you just um, and you just happy to have them in your life, uh, and you feel very strong about them. Um, now, uh, you should feel neutral towards the situation, not positive, not negative, just neutral. And okay, so it happened. Yeah, you know, people had worse childhoods. You can say even almost like that. Um, that should be enough. But uh, I would uh, ideally, I would go back and find other situations when you felt like your trust was broken find and uh, and also and understand that those people were just pushing you to heal your um your trauma um so just be like uh, somewhat um, grateful for putting light on your trauma that you should have healed um nothing else no no feeling negative about it um, remember that you're grown up right now, so you don't need anybody to to cater to your life. You don't need your um, your parents to act particular way. You don't need anybody to act particular way. You can do it all for yourself. So your life doesn't depend on other people. You, the other people are just coming to help you experience life. That's it. You are not dependable on them, and since you don't depend on them, um, they don't really need to. Um, to be super reliable so to say i mean it's it's up to them really if they want to stay in your life they should be reliable if not then um, then that's fine but it should not affect your life anyhow you see this um, this affects the huge the energy around the situation it puts a lot of pressure um 
Now, you don't hold on to the past um, disappointments, obviously. Uh, start taking risks with people around you, with situations. So, for example, a friend tells you, let's go on vacation, you're like, sure, you pick. And trust that, that, uh, that the choice would be amazing. Accept the choice when the, when the friend will do it. Um, start trusting yourself. This is the most important. Your affirmation should be always make right decisions. Um, work with your energy, obviously. Uh, would be good if you would work with somebody. And remove all the energetic pressure. So nothing in your life, no events, no uh, nothing is so important that you should uh, be anxious about it. I will tell you one story. I had an acquaintance and I don't know, so she had a fiance and they were supposed to get married. And for some reason she had this, so she had fear like this since I don't know how long. She said that she had it since high school. I don't know whether it's true or not. I never worked with her, so I'm not sure. I'm just telling you what she told me. And she had a, this fear that she would be left at the altar um, for some reason. I, I mean, I don't know, maybe she watched some kind of movies or whatever. Why would somebody have such fear? I don't understand. Why would a man go through all the preparations for the wedding and then not show up to his wedding? So it was kind of strange for me. But um, uh, so when the man proposed to her, she basically went with that and she had this fear and it was like non-stop in fear all the time. And she was just making herself more and more and more worked on that. Like in the, she was getting crazy and she would tell all the time, yeah, I, he, like, um, uh, I know he will leave me. I know, like, you know, it was, it was a little crazy. Why would you be preparing for the wedding? And uh, <laughs> long story short, I mean, he did left her at the wedding, but not because it was, uh, not because, uh, not because it was his fault that something happened and he couldn't, he couldn't come. So, I don't know. Uh, the the thing is that when she was uh, when she was telling me she basically was telling me to the point that look it materialized you know my fear materialized the thing is that it's not her fear materialized it was the so much pressure on that event that at one point that pressure had to to be released somehow and that's how it was released you see if he would show up and the wedding would go through that pressure would not go nowhere it would still stay there but when he didn't show up she's like oh, I knew it like this um, so I hope I inspired you to work on your on your on your trust issues I hope you start trusting people people are great they help us experience life so do trust them do enjoy them uh, it's an amazing feeling to have uh, to have others in your life and uh, do work on this um, on these problems if you do have if you have any questions, please ask. If you have, if you know anybody who will benefit from this video, please send it to them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody. Enjoy your day.